It's been four weeks, three debates and countless column inches, but finally we've arrived at election day. I went to ask Hilary Wainwright, editor of Red Pepper and fellow of the progressive think tank, the Transnational Institute, what she thought we'd learned. Well, I think we've learned, you know, how um, little appreciation the politicians have, all of them, all three, I mean, all the three main parties, of the gap between uh, themselves and the people. Um, I think that, in a way, Cameron and Clegg kind of had this image of change, we want change, and okay, Clegg wants change, you know, more genuinely, in my view, than Cameron. I mean, at least Cameron's change is back to a version of Thatcher. But, um, you know, it's a sort of Blair notion of change, sort of change with a smiley face, change at the surface. And what we've seen is that people really want change. People's, it's like a, a, a sort of a cumulative anger that in a sense, it, it goes back to 2005 and the Iraq war and so on, but has been, you know, massively reinforced by the whole, you know, expenses scandal and the inability of the political class to deal with the financial crisis and the, the inequalities that the whole financial crisis has revealed. I asked Hillary if she thought that disillusionment explained the rise of the Lib Dems. And if not, what does? No, I think it, it undoubtedly does. I think, you know, as soon as it was clear that there was somebody who was, you know, uh, I don't think expressing this disaffection strongly enough, but somebody who symbolically represented something other than the two main parties, the sort of Tweedledum and Tweedledee of British politics. Um, you know, he was like a magnet for this disaffection. Initially, I mean, obviously we don't know the results, but I think that, um, you know, in a sense, he still has a, a kind of appearance of being like them. I mean, the fact, I mean, for example, that Gillian Duffy, you know, who, who for me is sort of emblematic of, of, of this gulf and of the sort of both the contempt that the people have for the political class, but also the thing that explains that, which is the contempt that the political class has for the people. But look at her, you know, when um, she was asked where she, how she was going to vote after the whole experience with Gordon Brown, instead of saying, I've had enough of Labour, I'm actually thinking about voting Lib Dem. She just said, enough of the lot of them. So across the country, progressives are waking up today and by Hillary's reckoning, have very little choice. So what does she think they should do when they get to the polling booths? Well, I suppose I would, it depends where I was living. If I was in Brighton, I'd vote for Caroline Lucas, obviously no question. In Birmingham, Selma yeah. Yacoub. Caroline Lucas is for the Greens, Selma Yacoub for respect. Yeah. Um, and I think... Um, there are many good left MPs, a few at any rate, that I'd be, that I'd be voting for. Otherwise, I think in general, um, it's a matter of keeping, the ca keeping Cameron out, keeping the Tories out. And so if I was in a, a Tory Lib Dem marginal, I'd be voting Lib Dem. If I was in a, a Labour Tory marginal, I'd be voting Labour. So I think it's, it's a matter of pragmatic anti-Tory, but also pro any sort of transformative left politics that manages to get a voice. One of the most likely things to emerge from this election might be proportional representation. I asked Hillary what she thought the prospects were for the formation of an independent left party. It's clear that, you know, there's the constituency for um, a, an independent green left party. I think how it comes about is going to be complex because, precisely because it, this constituency in a way has been growing up, you could say, since the late 60s. So it, it's like a sort of um, geology of layers, generations, different experiences, traditions, in varying according to different cities, different regions. And I, I think anyway, we've had such bad experience of political parties, both here, but also, you know, internationally, including left parties, that. I think we've got to rethink what a political party is anyway. So I think don't let's focus on the new political party. Let's focus on a, um, a, a, a sort of transformative politics rooted in what people are doing day to day.